Okay, here comes the moment of truth. Can we combine the two models together? Well, we've got ready to do it. We've got wage bill over here, which I'm going to be substituting with wages up here. I still haven't got the, fi the uh, what capital is doing in terms of investing integrated with the financial system over here, and obviously that's a fairly important point. So what I'm going to do, very simple way of doing it, but let's give it a try, is bring up the godly table and get rid of the mechanical lend uh, borrowing of money by the firm sector and mechanical repayment and replace them with investment. That's called debt financed investment. Which I'll make something that would be either, let's, let's move my arrow key to move around here. Okay, using control key. Make it either positive or negative. Uh, and let's, so it's going to, it turns up here it's going to be minus investment because that's adding to the liability of the banking sector rose to the firm sector. And positive over there, so I've got that bit balanced. So that's all there is to do in terms of setting up the godly table to make sure we've got the financial flows covered. That's one great advantage of this approach over the flow chart. I'll make a little video shortly what it, what it looks like to do even the simplest of the godly tables using the flow chart approach. So I've got investment in there, and now I need to bring that down to here uh, because let's just make a copy, right click and choose copy. Put a park it there for the meantime. I've now got to make a fair bit of space here. Uh, again, once we implement much more um, flexible copying, being able to group and copy rather than having to create a bounding box, etc. Cetera, et cetera. You saw that little hassle I had beforehand. Just have to do a little bit of moving around to make these things work. But again, this is because we're still in a developmental stage of the program. We will be for quite some time. Let's just make the space. Pardon me. Go make a cup of coffee or something like that. Keep yourself awake while I get the things fixed up just to make the space. Okay. So there's our profit function. Now what I want to do is have the gap between investment and, pro and monetary investment and monetary profits as determining what the level of investment is. If the desire to invest exceeds uh, retained earnings, then firms go into debt to finance it. If the uh, desire to invest is less than retained earnings, then firms pay off their debts. So that investment comes a two-way uh, flow in that case. What I need to do at this one point is subtract investment from profits, or rather, subtract profits from investment to work out what um, the actual level of investment is, if the borrowing is going to be. So I've got to bring down profits from over here. So right check and choose copy. Flip that around. Investment minus prof profits is going to be uh, the, the monetary desire to invest but minus the actual level of retained earnings is going to be investment. So let's flip this over, drag it down here. It's getting messy here, but I can I could tidy that up with a group, um, which I'll do that in a moment, just make that uh, depreciation more obvious as a group. So then we just do wire. Ah, hang on, let's bring a minus sign first of all. So I can right click to flip that around, so it's now investment minus profits. The desire to invest is what's coming out of this function here. I might actually even call that I underscore D to make it clearer that it's desired investment. So let's do that. Uh, edit that. I underscore D for desired investment. Okay, so the gap between desired investment and well, what the investment actually turns out to be will be the borrowing that's under the take investment. I could have named that better, but this is the sort of thing we can fix up later. It's just a quick demo to show what it's like to integrate the two systems. And I've got wages up there. Let's just use the bounding box now to lasso those first few terms there. I hope I haven't caught tie B inside there. Yes, I have. Okay, let's just ungroup that and move tie B back up here again. Try that again, lasso, and just right click and delete that lot. Delete this one as well. Flip wages around, drag it over here, wire these two, whoops, again, here's the problem about it remembering wages predefined previously. So let's just quickly save this now. 
So I've got C there. I'll make it C2 because I've already done a test run of this to make sure it doesn't fall over, of course. And I'll show you this by doing it live anyway. Hope I got it right. Okay, file, new system, file, recent files, load that one, wire wages up again. Now that works. Okay, let's check it out. So I've now got money wages coming out of here and then turning up and what's coming out of the bank's account, the firm's accounts up here to pay wages. And then I have investment being the gap between uh, the actual well, desired investment, which becomes real investment. If they haven't got enough profits to do it, then they borrow the money from the banks, which is where this investment turn turns up here. Okay, let's click and see what happens.